talk. Um, my thought was it was going to be a short talk. It may not be as short. I can go longer. We can talk about it. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, but what I wanted to present on quickly was a, a new tool that I found um, from a company called Formidable Labs. I don't know if anyone's heard of them. They have a presentation library called Spectacle that I'm using to do the slides. Um, they work a lot with Walmart. Um, Walmart's adopting React in a big way, from what I've heard, so they're doing a lot of work with Walmart. And um, Radium, like the JS, or CSS and JSS stuff, they've got a library for that, so they've done some cool stuff. And uh, so I was, I was talking to one of the guys on the, this team because I showed you some of the components we have in our portal. We have like 10 different repositories, but they're all pretty similar. They're all React components, right? Um, and it was getting to be a challenge managing them all um, because we use a package.json to have our NPM tasks, right? <clears throat> and you know that that was a, getting to be a challenge just managing those when they change. So um, I was asking him how he handles it, and he's like, "Well, we just so you know we're just open sourcing this this tool, and you should take a look at it." So just wanted to kind of talk about my experience with it and what it's about. Um, so their goal with this, this tool they call Builder is to, to take your NPM tasks and make them composable, controllable from a single point and flexible. So I'll get into more about what that means. Um, so why do we need this? Uh, we like to use NPM. It, it's good for, for your modules, for dependencies, all that kind of stuff. Um, but like I said, for multiple similar repositories, that are basically, uh, if you're doing a React component and you're open sourcing that, or you're doing these little components, uh, it's, it could be a challenge managing all your tasks in the package.json. Um, so it's kind of hard to see this, but as another example, like I said, we have over 10 repositories, a lot like this, where we have like a build script, a start script, and that's very simple. We actually have a lot more complicated than that. But getting them all to be the same is, is hard, um, and then managing that when one changes. So. <clears throat> and like I, I showed you earlier, but like all these, basically all these things are in, in their own repository. Everything in a box is its own component, and we've been versioning them separately and putting them in NPM. Um, so there's a lot to manage. So. If this doesn't work, we might have to pull everything together because it's, it's getting to be a challenge. Um, so like I said, it doesn't scale. It's, it's hard to, if you want to change how you build things or how your test script runs, um, you've got to go to a lot of different places and change it. Plus, it's, it's a lot of overhead for a developer to have to, to have to learn and understand, and then everyone does it a little differently. So it's a good way to standardize on tasks. Um, so Builder, like I said, that's what I looked at using. Um, so it's a single point of control. Um, it's a way to define tasks and configs for a type of project. Um, like I said, we have a lot of repositories that are React components in our portal. And they're all very identical in the dev and the, all the workflow that we do. So we're looking for flexibility. There's a lot of tools for controlling your workflow. Um, but if, you're, if your steps are a little different, slightly different, then it makes it harder to use. So you can override tasks. If one task is a little bit different in a, in a different repository, you can override that. And I'll show you, because you have to get to the end to understand what that means. Um, the other thing you could do is, if this doesn't work for you, it's easy to fall back. They, they call it, you can give up. But they give you exact steps on how to revert back, basically there. They're using NPM tasks, but they have kind of a, a wrapper around it. So you could move these things back into your package.json if you wanted. Um, so Builder's a tool for consuming your script commands. Um, they've got sensible defaults. And the big thing is they have these archetypes, is what they're called. Um, so if you have a common use case, and the one they're really pushing right now is the React component archetype, which is really important for us. So these archetypes are opinionated. They uh, deal with common scenarios. They have a certain file structure that you need to adhere to, which I like because we were kind of all over the place, depending on who started the, the, 
the repository. Um, standard configurations, and they recommend having one per project. They're looking at being able to have multiple, but it's, it's, it's not what they're recommending right now. Um, so an archetype comes with, with um, uh, script tasks already included. Um, it, it comes with uh, two different um, dependencies that have all your, your React build dependencies already in them. Um, it, it comes with Babel and, and Webpack, and so you don't have to deal with that stuff, is what I like, especially if I want to give this out to um, students to work on or something. They don't under, need to understand how Webpack works. I don't know if anyone here uses Webpack or, or Babel or that kind of stuff. I can show you that. Um, so this is the, I can make that bigger. So this is their documentation for their, their archetype for React components. Um, basically the steps are you have to install their, their archetype and they split it into two because that way the dev dependencies can be excluded when you build. Um, so all their dev dependencies are pulled into the builder React component dev and anything that needs to be distributed goes in here. Um, but their, their project structure is opinionated. You, you could clone this and make your own if you wanted. Um, but you know, they, they want the source folder with your components. They want an index.js there. You know, they, it's very specific to how it's laid out. So, um, which I'm OK with, because we, we didn't really standardize on anything anyway. So this feels like it makes sense to me. Um, so once, once you have that installed and you have Builder installed, you can install Builder globally. Um, you can run the Builder help and it'll give you all the different Builder tasks. And these are basically alias for the um, package.json tasks that are part of the archetype. Um, so here's some examples. You can run Builder build and it actually will go and it'll build or run build and it'll run these other subtasks. Um, so they've already got commands for building a dist, for building a lib, for minifying your dist. Like all these things, like I said, it's opinionated. This is the way they're doing it. But for, for someone just getting started, this is a really nice way to have it set up. Um, commands for running a local dev server, um, running it with hot, um, hot reload, um, those things. Testing, they have, um, Karma configured, and they have a sample test. They have a sample test using um, React with shallow rendering, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's set up just to kind of just start take this and go, as long as this is how you want to do testing. Um, so their recommendation is if you have multiple repositories that are really similar, this, is, this could be a good tool. I like it because it abstracts away a lot of this stuff like Webpack and um, and I'll, I can show you real quick how that looks. It makes your repository a lot cleaner. You don't have all these different config files and things sitting around. Um, again, they only have the React, the React component archetype now, but they're looking at it. They're going to have others. I just don't know what. Um, and it's an easy way for beginners to get started with this stuff. So I have a question slide like everyone does. So. Again, this was supposed to be a lightning talk. I thought it was going to be five minutes. So, I <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I could I could show you a quick demo. Yeah, I think I'd like to see something that looks pretty useful. Yeah. Okay. So, and yeah. have does anyone use Yeoman? Yeah. Okay. So they have a generator to get, and this will get you started. This is the quickest way I know to really get started with doing a React component that you could just publish to NPM, which I, which I like. Um, so let's start, sorry about that. All right. So. I said I followed these steps to, you know, I installed their generator, and then I ran this command. So it's asking me for my name. I'll call it uh, Gaslight Component Matt. Um, I'll just put it under my personal. 
All right now they wrote this because they have a lot they have this library called victory which is like a data um, data visualization like a lot of charting and stuff and they have like 15 different components for like bar charts and all these different kinds of charts so they this is kind of why they made this tool so they ask you if you're writing a victory component I don't know if they're gonna at some point remove that or, or let you do something different but so what they do is it goes out to GitHub and pulls down the latest archetype and all of it. So it, it just takes a second. It has to do an install. So once this is done, I'll have a, a repository set up with the proper structure with builder installed. And then I can kind of show you what the different commands look like. Yes. Yes. Yep. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't generate an npm ignore. Well, it might. This might. Okay. Um, which is, in, you know, that's an important step to make a clean. So we'll see. This won't take much longer. You know, I've seen some like different starter repos and stuff, but this to me just seems a lot cleaner way to start. So now I should have a folder. Oh, I made it right in. That's okay. I made it I'll delete that later. Um, so, so did I get an npm ignore? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, let me open this and add it real quick to see. Again. It's over here. All right. So I got my. So they set, up, they set up, you know, based on the name, to build a component called Gaslight. So what this does is it exports my component um, from the source folder. So uh, apparently my ESLint's not set up right. But. So uh, I guess, what's that? <laughs> Come on now. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they do have a, looks like a pretty decent NPM ignore, so you should be set. Um, so let me go back then. To, Is it customizable? I would say you would just clone their archetype. Right. Because I'm very opinionated. <laughs> right, right. I disagree with some of their opinions here. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right, and then using Yeoman to distribute it, you don't like that? Well, it's, it seems like a good solution though for this, because it builds your folder structure. You don't have to go get clone anything down. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying I didn't realize. Yeah, I don't know if there's a. I don't know if there's another thing. If there's a new Yeoman, I haven't heard about it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I can run builder run build, and that'll go ahead and I'll build out my lib folder and my dist. Um, I created created my dist here, and then if I was gonna package this and put it in npm, like I, my my main setup to be slash lib slash index.js, right? So my builder run build also 
populated my lib folder for me. So it it took all my ES6 and used Babel to build this lib folder. So you don't need to worry. Because one thing we had a problem with is we would we would use ES6 and JSX in our React components. Then we try to import them into other React components. And a lot of the Webpack configs and stuff is set up to to not use Babel on your node modules folder at all, right? So it's just a lot easier if you can get a Babel uh, ES5 friendly version of your component. It's a lot better. Um, right, so then, yeah, this should be ready to go. I should just be able to do npm publish. I don't have anything good. So now I have <laughs> so, so it, yeah, I mean, it depends how your, what your goal is. Our goal is to build a lot of individual components, so this is a really good fit for us. Um, we don't have, we have a portal where we're just plugging all this in, so. Yeah, 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 which is, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, builder run, there's different builder run commands with this open dev, oh wait. I had a conflict with my uh, presentation. I was just kidding. Is it running somewhere else? Sorry, the, my slides were running on the same port. But yeah, so it's just it's simple. But if you're if you're all your components you're you're making for the library all have the same structure and all have the demo and everything set up. It's annoying when you have a package you want to install and you want to play with and there's no demo. You know. Yeah. This is nice to be able to provide that. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if it was Right. Pass all the different props in for all the different states that you can be in, or trigger them in, or anything. Yeah. So I, I could, real quick, and then I can be done. I can show you the um, how we're using the the components with with Redux, like total. Um, oh, it's that. That's not the right. Sorry. One second. So the checklist component that I showed you before, right, the dumb component, this is the, the smart wrapper around that component. Um, so this is the, the dumb component, and so we're just injecting the data as props. We're, we're saying, is it fetching? We're passing that in. So Redux is actually providing that. Um, the fetch is just the Redux API for, for getting the data, and invalidate is just for refreshing the data. So it's a, it's a pretty easy way, it's a pretty clean way to separate the UI, and, and if you're building a complex application, it works pretty well. So um, I guess that's all I've got. I don't know. I'm not a React. Expert, I <laughs> I know you're looking for in the back. What's your name, Jarrett? Sure. Yeah, looking for a an introduction to React. I've read enough about it that that doesn't. Okay, well that's what's cool about React is the API. That's pretty much the API, right? <laughs> it's a lot of lifecycle methods and 
JavaScript. So. Figuring out what life cycle methods do what. Yeah. And then the, the little intricate things with JSX, like class name instead of class. Yeah. Figuring those out are the hard parts. Yeah. And then once you get that, then you're like, oh, this is really cool. And then you're like, how do I do more? And the question that you have is like, how do I do all these remote calls? And how do I compose these components? Yeah, the routing stuff is. <laughs> yeah. I think it's but that's, that's how, I mean, there was like, you use Reflux, right? There was like 10, 15 different Flux libraries, and they've really just like settled on Redux, it seems like, all of a sudden. Um, I'm sure they'll, someone will come out with one, well, but. Dan Abramov got hired by Facebook. Yeah, I saw that. Redux is kind of now the official, <laughs> right. unofficial Flux, I think, so. Right. And Ron was going to talk about that, but... Yeah, what happened to Ron? I was looking at the channel. Yeah, he, he's been driving for a while. Yeah. But the problem with the state of the is they're sort of difficult to test in a way because they don't render the same. Mm -hmm. So it's a little difficult. You have to... You think that it'd be easier. So you can, you can, in a sense, test them as you would test a pure function, yeah. but when you want to test the rendered output, that's when it gets to be difficult. You have to actually wrap them, and actually, I have some of that set up here, but you have to wrap them in an actual component to get them to render mm -hmm. so uh, that you can test the rendered output. That's not, I don't know enough. Yeah. I can show you. Yeah, go ahead. Let me uh, use the <laughs> I, I guess the other thing I'll try and sell you on.